We'll just get started in another minute. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Am I audible? Uh, audible, but some echo is coming. Probably multiple device very closely spaced. Is it better now? Yes. Now it is. Yes. Okay. So I think we can get started. Thank you all for joining. Uh, and good afternoon to all. Yes. Yes. On behalf of Jadavpur University Alumni Association Singapore chapter, a very warm welcome to all of you, including the panelists. So before we jump to the main agenda of our today's panel discussion, I just wanted to walk you through a quick background of who we are, what we do, and rather what we intend to do, and what are our regular touch points with our uh, beloved university. So we are uh, the Singapore chapter of Jadavpur Alumni Association. We are a registered society here in Sing under Singapore government. We started around November 2014, uh, we took some gradual baby steps, and now we are almost 175 plus members. We all tie, uh, I mean, we ha all have a common uh, tie that with our alma mater, Jadapur University, to anything to give back and kind of provide a networking platform. So, basically, what we intend to, or rather, what is our mission and vision, so what we intend to do. But, uh, the first and foremost thing is obviously to promote the JU brand. The welfare of Jew brand across Southeast Asia and Singapore uh, uh, regions to provide a platform for networking. So that's a predominant reason we are here. And also another very important thread to maintain a very close cooperation with our university and kind of a small initiative to give back something uh, to, uh, to the university and to the current students in any form or any shape. Uh, among our university, uh, among our initiatives, what we are currently partnering with the university, uh, mainly we call this an Excel at the rate you are, kind of Excel alumni university relationship. We are conducting kind of a series of lectures. Uh, I think this is the second uh, of that sort. Uh, we had uh, one uh, lecture conducted specifically a pretty technical topic, AI and ML, uh, sometime around August. And then during this pandemic scenario, kind of pace got a bit slowed down. So, but yeah, good that we are again back here again. Uh, uh, we partnered the LaunchX, I think around, during March, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, with university. And apart from that, we do interact among ourselves here in Singapore community. We do organize some professional events for SHR, panel discussions, as well as some uh, 
uh, family get togethers as well this year it is being limited but we are trying to see uh, how soon we can be back to new normal and taking a cue from there as we are talking about the new normal uh, probably today's topic is very interesting uh, we thought that a uh, lot of uh, students are graduating this year so we kind of try to uh, get a sense what their what is going on in their mind and thought that uh, how from uh, definitely some industry pioneers getting some sort of direction some sort of assurances that how this anxieties can be tackled on and uh, what are, what is in store for our future specifically for those who are graduating in this in this 2021 or 2022 uh, so having said that i would like to hand over uh, the session to our moderator so mr water chairya he is she is a 2001 computer science graduate uh, from our university so yeah over to you ashwin mr thank you kanu can you guys hear me loud and clear yes yes okay great okay welcome everyone so first of all it's an absolute honor for me to host this um, very charged up evening i would say with eminent alumni from various departments of ju but of course before i begin a big shout out for all the organizers without whose drive and commitment this uh, evening wouldn't have been possible so as kono explained this evening has been organized primarily because we felt that during these difficult times when the whole world is kind of grappling with um, the covid and the impact of covid how can we help the students of ju and thought and we thought that perhaps we could derive inspiration and advice from our own uh, alumni stalwarts in the industry who have very kindly agreed to spare some time for us as well as um, the students who are the rising stars the third year student final year students even the fresh graduate on how to prepare for this new normal that is emerging in the industry so without much further ado i'll quickly briefly introduce our panelists today i'll keep it very brief because we have a section later on where we would like each of them to to just go through their journey post jeu share with us so first of all we have mr arup chakravarti electronics 1991 who's a technology evangelist and entrepreneur running green wave solutions and innovation driven enterprise focused on iot arup da maybe you can just raise your hand to show yeah <laughs> then we have then we have mr shoti shen electrical 1993 batch who runs his own firm bridge it to biz consulting services providing enterprise application services and other innovative platforms for young entrepreneurs shoti da maybe you can just raise your hand just to show who you are yeah thank you uh we have mr arnab bashu who uh, electrical 1999 who is the managing partner for pwc in eastern india and also leads the technology consulting for pwc in india you see or no i think onobash is just running he is facing some challenges he'll be just joining back okay sure no problem and then uh, we have shoibal bhattacharya uh, production 2002 who is currently in a leadership role in software product marketing department of adobe and last definitely the least i am your host for today evening shomisha bhattacharya computer science 2001 batch I've been in the technology industry for almost 20 years now working with various firms like Atrenta, Intera, Autodesk, HCL and currently in a leadership role in a technology consulting firm called Delaware um, in Singapore. Okay now since we have an overwhelming uh, overwhelming response almost more than 250 participants is what I heard I would like to set some ground rules first please quickly So in the interest of time I've structured the questions into broad topics which we will go through later and would request everyone to be mindful of the time as we in intend to close within 75 minutes. Also apologies we are unable to take online questions through video chat hence we'll keep the mics muted for everyone except for panelists and organizers as required. Uh there'll be a 20 minute question answer section towards the end when Konob and I will be covering the questions received through uh, through Google Forms as well as online questions. if they have not already been covered in the sec previous sections and in case we are unable to address all the questions we'll get back to the ju cell with uh, clarifications from panelists over email so moving quickly to the first section as from the response received from the google forms our listeners would like to hear from each of our panelists on your journey post ju sorry okay yeah or no i think we wanted to see no, your or no was joined put a face to your name it's okay yeah Thank you. Hi, I've joined. Thank you. Yeah. 
So we'll start with Shotida. Can you like we just wanted to hear a brief introduction about yourself and um, and your journey post JU? Uh, you're you're muted. Uh, all panelists, I think you have to request you to unmute yourself. Uh, Shruti, though we can can't hear you. The panelists need to unmute themselves. Uh, we cannot unmute from here. Shabalda, you are still unmuted. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, I think Shruti has unmuted himself, but uh, still there is a issue. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, we can. No. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for the glitch. Uh, no I. I graduated in 1993 from Jadapur Electrical Engineering. That's quite a few years back. And uh, I aspired to become an electrical engineer to the core. So I went for ma a master's at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. And then even joined Siemens, for that matter, for a uh, year and a half, only to discover something which was a, a software which could do everything, yeah, you know, integrate enterprises. And that uh, went uh, led me to Pricewaterhouse at that time, SAP practice in 1996. Uh, as a team, uh, you know, I was one of the very first few who can be credited with winning and setting up an SAP offshore project for PwC at that time. And uh, I moved on in my career to IBM and I uh, I was, uh, when I moved on in 2017, I was the S SAP partner and practice lead for IBM India. I now run a small firm, Bridge IT to Business. As it says, uh, it's to bridge IT with business, consulting services, providing enterpri enterprise application services. And we are also experimenting with uh, setting up a small light platform for young entrepreneurs to build upon their ideas. Uh, what I would like to share something beyond uh, you know, work and things like that. I like time to be spent on creative mediums. I have two little children whom I do a lot of parenting, like all uh, bongs for that matter, or Indians for the matter. And I strive to make every day better than yesterday. Now, three takeaways from my journey so far is education is a basic qualification criteria and it opens few doors including higher education jobs for that matter so if you are studying in Jalapur university is just giving a head start over others being a brand but it will not stay for long your first job may not be the most encouraging experience you know and i still recollect when i was in siemens i watched a movie named english hours which uh, resonated very well with me at that time. And, uh, you know, you will always find that you do not expect it in that way. So the motto for me, uh, take away from this is do what you like or like what you do. Now, the first six months in your career, no question is a stupid question. And but post it, you know, you are expected to know the intricacies of the job you are do doing. So first six months of your first job are very, very critical. And you should discuss with your mentor, peers to get along with it. So that is my short introduction about myself and, um, you know, what I did so far. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shotida. Uh, Arubda, can we have a brief introduction from you, please? Yes, Sir Mishra, thank you so much. And uh, welcome, everybody, uh, especially the young, fresh graduates and the fourth year and third year students from Jadupur. Uh, I passed out in 1991, so it's almost like Stone Age uh, compared to where you are right now. And uh, it's been a very, very exciting journey for me for the last three decades almost. But I still uh, feel that my best days of my life were in all, all in Jadupur. I, mean, I still live, live very close to Jadupur in Calcutta. 
whenever I get time, I go for an evening walk. I'm also associated with the university in a couple of initiatives. So I still maintain a very, very strong touch with the university. I'm really delighted today that the Singapore Alumni Association called me in, though I had very little uh, touch point with them. Uh, in my career, I had a brief stint in Singapore, but not really, uh, nothing very you know, significant. So I started my career in HCL straight out of campus. Uh, I joined the HCL automation division. As Sothi was saying that the first job is never really the benchmark or never really the only job which you should uh, really carry forward throughout your life. So I joined uh, HCL automation division and we were selling something called EPABX. Okay, I don't know how many of you know what is EPABX. It's a telephone exchange. Okay, uh, it's quite archaic and old at this point in time dated. And then I moved to a, uh, another HCL company, which was called HCL Comnet. And we were the very first employees to be taken from one company within HCL to form that company called Comnet. Now, though we were under the HCL umbrella, HCL Comnet was completely like a startup in 1994. I moved to Bombay from Calcutta. And I remember our first office was a garage kind of an office with one computer, 20 of us queuing in front of that computer to make a proposal. And during the Bombay rains, you know, the office roof used to leak. Okay, so that was HCL Comnet. Today, if you look at HCL Comnet, HCL Comnet is a $2 billion enterprise. And they are perhaps the, uh, they, renamed or rechristened called the Infrastructure Services Unit of HCL Technologies. And they're a $2 billion enterprise. Uh, so the, you know, uh, learning for all of us, or at least for me, is that, you know, from a garage to a $2 billion enterprise is something very, very exciting. And uh, when you look at you know, as a starting point of your career, and did not always get enamored by a big brand. You know, a small startup or a small entrepreneurial venture can give you a big head start in your career, a very, very adventurous journey. Uh, I still remember HCL when you used to go to recruit in B schools, our you know, poster or our, you know, the opening slide used to say, if you're looking for a job, don't join us. If you're looking for adventure, do join us. Okay. Uh, so look at a career which is full of thrills, full of fun, and full of rich job content. Uh, so I continued in HCL till about 2008, and then I uh, the entrepreneurial bug, uh, you know, sort of, you know, struck me. I quit my job. I started Greenway, and 2008 the big recession, you know, hit us. 2007 to 2010, if you uh, remember, it was the subprime crisis and the all the big banks in America collapsed. And uh, as I was expecting some funding. Uh, the guy who was supposed to fund us our venture, he backed out. So we are left completely high and dry. Went back to uh, industry again for a couple of years in Deepro Technology. Did some consulting for them. And in 2010, I again restarted Greenway. Okay, so there is a little bit of a learning for all of us here, especially for the young students. Uh, so the subprime crisis or the big recession in 27, uh, 2007 was almost, I would say not almost, but something similar to what you're exper experiencing right now. In 2007-8, I remember companies issued upon others, they held back, they deferred the appointments, the job market was completely in old rounds. Uh, people who were graduating in that particular year or year after, uh, they were uh, very, very worried that what would be my job prospect. But look at uh, the world today, or look at the world till about a year back from today. Uh, everything was hunky-dory, right? Everything was you know, growing at a double-digit growth. India was clocking 8.5% GDP growth. So it's it's I think you know the COVID nineteen which has hit us is really bad, but it's momentary. It's going to pass. It's not going to be here for in the long. Uh, or not, it's not a permanent syndrome. So don't lose heart. And uh, then what I did uh, in from two thousand ten to till date, I'm running a company called Greenway. We do IIoT solutions for core industries, analytics, manufacturing analytics for core industries, and I'm enjoying the ride. Okay, but. If you really want me to rank, uh, you know, in terms of thrill, excitement, fun, and what I like most, I will always rank number one as my JU days. Uh, thank you, Arunda. Arnab, can we hear from you, please? Yes, you can. Uh, so, good afternoon to everybody from JU. Uh, it's really a pleasure always to talk to anybody in campus, and third year, fourth year probably the best days of our life uh, in college. So I'm hoping that you're having a great run, though. I can understand that you've not been in college for probably seven, eight months. And uh, if you ask me, you're really missing out all the fun. Uh, so a bit about myself. I passed out of electrical in uh, 1999. 
and then subsequently i went on to i am calcutta and did my mba from there and passed out of there in 2001 and from 2001 from campus i joined thrice water house coopers and i'm still with pwc uh, i'm still on my first job uh, i look after the technology i'm based out of kolkata and like arup i'm uh, quite close to the campus even now and uh, do go go over to the campus sometimes uh, still associated with the electrical alumni uh, so i think uh, a few thoughts from my side uh, see i haven't changed jobs but i think what shoti said about uh, you know the first job it obviously you know your education allows you to you know get into a good ba- good brand uh, and of course it opens a few initial doors but then after that it is uh, entirely up to your enterprise and your sincerity and motivation and focus which probably propels you uh, across i think one of the things which i have uh, really uh, enjoyed in my ride with pwc is that you know keep asking for changes you know otherwise after a while at least for me things get monotonous and uh, boring so don't be afraid to ask for a change uh, be ready to take the plunge into something new uh, i i have worked 20 years i in my 20th year with the firm but i've worked out of several offices and uh, both inside india and outside and i think it all as you become more and more broad uh, you know you become a more of a global citizen have uh, i would say greater acceptability across clients you know both indian clients as well as mnc clients and i think when when they look at you uh, as a consultant you know one of the key things which they are looking for is you know how do you build trust in a relationship and how do you you know sort of invest in the relationship so i think those would be a few of my pointers that you know don't be afraid of asking for a change uh, keep investing in the relationship and uh, finally you know look for look for variety of experience uh, i i personally think that the variety really adds flavor to the job so that would be my initial thoughts back to you shamista thank you so much anna uh, shoibal thank you thank you shamista ji uh, am i audible clearly yes clearly i apologize i as you would have it there is a power cut in delhi so i am a little bit in the dark but uh, i'll i'll soldier on hopefully the power will be back soon so maybe there's a little bit of lack of light at my end i apologize about that uh, it was great to hear from arubda uh, shotida arnobda i think uh, arnobda shorobda shormista the uh, there was a little bit of overlap between your time and my time i joined in 1998 yes. so <laughs> uh uh you know so it was great to you know connect with all of you again uh so uh, i graduated from uh, ju production in 2002 and uh, even at that time uh, just to give you a little bit of context of how i uh, you know started my professional career even at that time there was a dot com bubble burst uh, and and if you would remember a lot of companies were giving regret letters or deferred joinings so for, for for a lot of our seniors they were hanging out even after graduating and we were playing football in the ground till 8 9 i remember those days and at, and then it hit us because we were then the third year students uh, you know appearing for interviews and i remember uh, we have always seen uh, our seniors uh, playing tt and then rushing to give an interview and then coming back and completing the game and at the end of the day everybody has gotten placed so that's the culture that we had grown up with and then in 2000 when we appeared i, I remember tcs came and we were expecting like ever uh, like like as usual they would be taking probably 100 200 300 500 students and that year they took 20 students uh, across all batches all uh, you know departments combined and uh, i was one of the shortlisted candidates i made it through to the last round uh, and uh, i could not crack it uh, i had uh, zero understanding of or knowledge of c c programming uh, and some of the questions that they asked uh, you know i didn't know the answers to them simple questions like bubble sort insertion sort what's the difference and things like that 
and just to deal with the disappointment i didn't have enough time because next day cognizant was coming on campus and uh, so i had one day to kind of uh, do my preparations and next day when cognizant came uh, the same questions were asked by the panelists and <laughs> by that time i had prepared the answers to those questions and then <laughs> that's how i entered cognizant uh, and and this is a real life story i mean uh, there's nothing to hide here so that's how uh, you know we got placed and i started my career with cognizant in kolkata uh, i i joined the sap practice that they were building as a developer abap4 advanced business application programming language was the programming language i still remember but for my 3 years first 3 years of professional life uh, i would say most of it was spent in ju because i would come back uh, early from office and hit the grounds and still play football and hang around so that continued for about 3 years and then uh, obviously i was trying for uh, an mba i was trying i was appearing for cat i appeared for cat a couple of times uh, couldn't crack it and then uh, in the third year uh, i cracked fms and sp jan and xlri uh, i didn't crack any of the iams uh, and i took uh, the opportunity to come to delhi uh, and fms uh, in fms uh, the biggest eye opener for me uh, was when you uh, you know come out of uh, a city and a protected environment south point school jadavpur then cognizant you leave your comfort zone for the first time after 27 at the age of 27 years and you suddenly are thrown into a pool where it's you know cutthroat competitive everybody is ambitious and one of the things that i realized interacting in that environment was uh you know what set uh, us at least when i say us i am taking a lot of pride in representing ju is that we have an idea of uh, what we know and we don't know uh it was very uh, surprising to see that a lot of people didn't know that they didn't know uh so that also kind of gives you a sense of the background and depth and breadth that ju can uh, inculcate in a person uh from there i did my internship with microsoft and after graduating i came back to cognizant kolkata to work for the same team for one year uh, after that uh, within a year uh, me and my wife uh, amrita uh, she uh, was graduating from fms so we decided to move to delhi uh, because that was working out to be a common ground for us so i joined a startup called indus valley partners which was a technology consulting firm where i worked directly with the ceo and md as a one person sales marketing bd team and those two years of being the single person in the team and not having anyone to delegate any work to made sure that i had to get my hands dirty and do everything uh, yourself myself so from there the opportunity to move to adobe came and i have been with adobe for the last 11 years uh, i run product marketing worldwide for a product portfolio uh, we run the pnl of that business from here and the last 11 years has been a really really uh, enriching experience for me professionally uh, more so because of the exposure i have had in terms of interacting with customers partners and also employees and colleagues uh, spread across the world germany japan us singapore uh, and even on my business trips to japan a couple of times i did stop over in singapore and met shugotunda and the others so uh, i would say uh, you know the last few years uh, have really allowed me to kind of maximize my potential and learning and uh, hopefully i will be able to share some of those insights and experiences with the third year fourth year students in our discussions today sure thanks shivan so i was just trying to take notes and you know just kind of summarize what we can take away from your experience and from just i think it will be quite interesting to see like uh, within this few minutes how uh, you have shared some very uh, words of wisdom with us which i think the the listeners can take back as well so like from arugda like covid is impermanent so we should keep that in mind it's just a change from shotida like education opens doors but job is where you really start learning from our no your job first job is really the start of the exciting journey so don't be afraid to ask for changes and from shoibal get your hands dirty i think these are my takeaways i'm sure you can have your own takeaways 
But I, in the interest of time, actually, initially, I had thought that I'll uh, again have another round of session going through each and individually to understand how COVID is affecting your business and then what are the measures being taken by your organization to, uh, to combat those. But um, what I'm thinking is because uh, I have divided, I kind of organized the discussion into subsections where each of you, I will go to each of you to lead those subsections. As part of that, I think the first thing maybe you can share with us is how COVID is affecting your business and how you're reacting to that. And then the first topic that we want to discuss um, moving on is that um, uh, the thoughts that basically from, we had asked the listener, the, uh, the participants to send in uh, questions on what they would like to be discussed. And uh, one of the common themes that we have seen is like impact of COVID on the job market. So that is something that maybe I can ask Karubda to share with us and also like in, in, in your personal experience also, what are the measures being taken in your company to, to combat that? Okay, uh, so thanks for Mishra. So first of all, uh, let me first uh, start with uh, how did we sort of recalibrate our own organization to react to COVID or to you know deal with COVID. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, you know, till about February, like uh, the government of India, we are in complete denial that there is something called COVID. Okay, so business was fine, everything was going fine. Uh, so my first learning is that, uh, and the learning which I'd like to share with all the uh, participants here is that if there is a, a rumor uh, global rumor about some pandemic or some certain global phenomena which can adversely affect your business do take a note of that and try to you know prepare yourself before the others are preparing okay or before the pandemic or the disaster actually hits you so like the government of india we completely ignored the wordings and uh, you know we are a startup i mean we are a 10 year young company uh, where uh, we do close to 20 22 crores per annum and uh, being a engineering company, a lot of our billing is, uh, you know, sort of tail loaded uh, towards the year ending, which is March. So 30% of our billing got stuck straight away uh, because we couldn't ship because of the lockdown. So we were stuck with a huge amount of inventory. More than the inventory, what really struck in terms of the employees is that they were all completely worried because the inventories are not moving. The lockdown is completely indefinite, uncertain, and whether this company, which is a startup, which is not like a TCS or a or a you know cognizant or maybe a you know sale or you know Jindal Steel, they are going to tide over the crisis. Whether we'll go down under or we can you know still you know swim out of it. So the first three months, and every time the prime minister used to come on TV, we used to really think that you know one more extension of lockdown, and we were really clueless. So the first thing we did is that uh, we made sure that we were communicating every day to all our employees on a Zoom call, like we are actually operating in the same office. So we never stopped communication. So the first thing we really adopted is that we kept our communication thread really strong with all the employees, all our partners, and all our customers also. Then the second thing which we did is that you know we are in two types of business. In one type of business, we you know create the solution, engineer the solution, manufacture it, and then ship it out, and then you know install the solution. The second part is the life cycle support for the you know units which you have installed in the customer's manufacturing setup. So traditionally, all manufacturing companies, the shop floors are not as advanced as IT companies or the enterprise IT setup where you know we are used to delivery. Uh, deliver things from remote. The whole offshore infrastructure management, uh, you know, paradigm is how do you do remote delivery? Or the whole offshoring of software development, uh, application maintenance and support is really uh, taught us that you know how do I perfect my delivery from a remote center, which is which could be thousand miles away from the actual uh, you know data center or actual office, right? In the shop floor, in the manufacturing area, people uh, believe that they should be next to the machine in order to operate the machine. Or in order to fix the machine if there is a problem in the machine we completely saw that belief crumbling down because people were forced to operate plants critical plants like an you know, oil refinery with very limited resource and they had to very quickly realign themselves to the new reality that i need to provide secure remote access and i need to do whatever i can do from remote okay so as an organization fortunately uh, because of my background in HL technologies where I used to, you know, I, I did a global delivery role for remote infrastructure management. We had been toying around that how can I really, you know, manage and monitor a factory from remote. So we could very quickly adopt to that new normal. 
and uh, most of our customers really loved our approach and the agility with which we started recalibrating our services from on site to remote okay and uh, that that's one one uh, predominant factor why we think that we have come out of this you know crisis successfully to a certain extent so we had zero attrition in terms of employee uh, we had zero attrition in terms of customer contracts and uh, most of our customers uh, you know the other other thing which i would like to mention is that we chose our customer segments very carefully uh, when we started our business so we we looked at industries which are a green field which has got a long runway for growth so we work with consumer product companies renewable power energy companies oil and gas companies so these companies you know if you see the impact of covid in in terms of industry segment these companies are least impacted if you look at a food and beverage company like let's say unilever or hindustan unilever or take for example a company like itc or into branded foods or packaged food or britannia you see the market share and the revenue for them has grown even during the covid time i mean yesterday only itc actually uh, published their annual results the company has de grown in terms of revenue but their consumer products the non cigarette business has grown substantially so what's happened is that you know perhaps the smokers really couldn't go out and buy cigarettes during lockdown that's the reason that cigarette sales has come down but at the same time you know because the online delivery of all packaged foods okay we are all you know today i mean you know being a classical bong i still love to go to the wet market to buy sabji every sunday okay i still love to go to fish market but that habit of mine has tremendously undergone a change during covid because i had no option but to you know go to grofers or big basket right so if i go to grofers or big basket i cannot really ask for a non branded product so the branded packaged food packaged consumer products industry is really not much impacted so coming back uh, to you know in terms of our company i think we did three things we maintained our communication line very strong internally and externally with both stakeholders we recalibrated our delivery model and uh, something which perhaps you know uh, the young guys young freshers or will not be able to identify with is we maintained our, our managed our cash flow really tight because the worst possible impact was in terms of business was on cash flow and companies who could manage their cash flow they have really come out of the woods to a certain extent companies who couldn't manage their cash flow in covid they are still struggling to come out now coming back to the second part of your question which is to do with uh, you know the impact on the industry Uh, so i i'll talk about core because i deal with uh, my end customers are all from core industries so if i look at core uh, the core of the core is really where metal mining power you know coal fired power cement these are the you know you know parent industries or as we call you know mechanical engineering electrical and chemical as we call them the parent engineering these are the parent industries as we call them now these industries have been impacted the reason they have been impacted is that uh the infrastructure project the spending on the infrastructure project from government of india or the institutional spend on infrastructure projects they have taken a back seat and we really don't know in spite of all the bullish announcements from the government uh, how long they will really take to come back to the normal pre covid normal spending okay uh, my my uh, you know rational guess is that you know it will take anywhere from 12 to 18 or 24 months for these companies like companies like sail or tata steel or maybe uh you know uh, an ultra tech to really come back to their normal rhythm it will take at least uh, eight to nine quarters minimum if not more okay so that's that's the core now alongside the core there are host of sorry, other uh, sorry arubha i my i'll have to interject a little bit because i think we are running running a little bit behind time as per plan what we had um, plan was that on each of these topics we spend 5 to 7 minutes each of you and then we'll come back to you with the questions that we have from the uh, that okay. we already have from the, uh, so shall we say quick, quickly summarize i think you know yes. the 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 message i'd like to leave with the uh, young turks here is that uh, the core is affected definitely but it is definitely not badly affected the hiring is completely it's not completely frozen the hiring is on maybe if there were 100 jobs for let's say 500 aspir you know aspiring students today those 100 jobs has shrunk to maybe 50 jobs or 30 jobs so you will have more competition for the same job and you have to prepare accordingly so that you can you are the one who selected for those 30 or 50 jobs 
but don't lose heart because as i said that you know the subprime crisis or the dot com bubble these are all passing phenomena maybe this phenomena has struck us stronger than those and it will stay for longer but we will all bounce back within 18 to 24 months in a in a completely uh, you know booming economy i can assure you on that the world is not really you know going down under we are all very resilient and you are from a generation which is i call it hope color of generation a uh, whole color of generation cannot really you know go down I mean, you are the you are the uh, backbone of the energy or, or you're the source fountainhead of energy as far as we are concerned so be strong be focused and i'm sure you'll bounce back sure thank you sir i'll, I'll come back to you after, because we have a question our section we have some questions which probably have still not been answered so i'll come back to you during that section uh, but now moving on to the next section which is changes as we discuss the impact on the job market so the next question is is related to the impact the changes in the hiring process. So maybe I'll ask Shotida to explain uh, a little bit uh, his how his company is reacting to it, or what are the changes done, and what he his advice for the students on how the hiring process is changing. Okay, a bit on the context of it. Uh, you know, this this pandemic has has been a great thing to happen because it unsettled everyone. And now it is, you know, it's a level playing field. Today I am sitting at home and everyone other is also sitting at home. And each have access to technology almost similar uh, uh, for that matter. Now you have to differentiate. Now as you heard, Aruddha, the key pillars of success are three things. One is talent, trust, and how you reinvent the business model. These are, to my uh, understanding, these are three things you have to look at it. As Aruda said, he didn't lose anyone for that matter, right? Now, if you look at talent and uh, being more specific about uh, the industry which I belong to, IT services, are there four or five things which we need to take in mind? You know, the ability to unlearn and learn, uh, communication. You have to collaborate. Earlier, you were sitting in the next uh, cubicle. You are collaborating, but now everyone is all over the world, and you need to have organization collaboration working on it. Uh, you have flattened layers of organization, so each and every one, from the right from the top to the most management to the bottom most coder, you need to have a hang of you know problem solving. And to this, I would like to refer to you know one of my most famous. Uh, icons in, in uh, human history, that's Edison, Thomas Alva Edison. He didn't actually invent the incandescent bulb. But what he did was to actually invent and design something which is a filament. So you don't need to change everything, but you still can make a large impact by doing something in a different manner. And that is what, you know, so most of us probably know that he invented the electric bulb. And opportunity will come. And there is opportunity in every every good or bad thing. And again, uh, quoting uh, Edison, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like a, you know, a good deal of work. So you know, this is something which I feel that uh, is something we, we should inculcate in ourselves. We have to work, we have to you know, dive into muddy water and still do things. Now, what do you look at uh, you know, when you look at uh, the hiring process for that matter? Now, I believe that there are three things, again, you need to look into it uh, as you uh, work through the hiring mechanism. One is network as much as you can. Your you know, just like what you, you we are doing right now. You know, the Alumni Association has helped us integrate company with young graduates who are coming out, right, from the college. So network as much as you can. And when you go for an um, uh, interview, earlier it was in-person, in-campus interviews. Now everything has gone online. So now you have to be able to articulate why you they should hire you. And you should communicate to them in the best possible way. And I think it's a common problem when we were in college to what it is now. Communication is an issue. 
So to share my own personal experience of final year in Jadavpur, we had LNT ECC coming to college and uh, they organized the GD group discussion. We were 20 of us in a long uh, room in Jadavpur University main building. I forgot, forget the name of it. But of the 20 people, no one was talking at all. So I realized it was Ijat of you know, Jadavpur University. I have to start. So I started the conversation and asked everyone to speak. You know, unlike other situations which you might have faced, that everyone talks and nobody listens. So I made everyone, 19 people talk. And there was still one person, Shukuma Chakravarti. He didn't speak. So I told him, Shukuma, what's the matter? Why are you not saying something? And he said, I'm listening. And what is the best thing which has happened, I think, a takeaway is, there were two people selected by LNTCC after the GD, and that was myself and Shukuma. So sometimes only talking is not important, but listening is also very important. And this is something, you know, when you are in a, uh, you know, kind of an online mode, you also need to hear what is happening. It's, and you have to listen, not hear. And you have to look at what is your want and what is your need. So this is something which you have to take care of. And when you uh, look into presenting in this digital era, for that matter, uh, you know, you might consider highlighting your uh, experiences uh, with the power model. So you will get ma maximum 10 minutes to speak to someone, right? And here you have to look at three things again. What is the problem? What is the action you took? And what is the result? So which is one of the power principles, and you, you have to you have to be different from most of others in a better way, right? So you might try a video resume. That's a good thing, you know, because it helps you to articulate well, and it's um it's, it's more closer to being just over the phone or otherwise. And uh, I think uh, being in the pandemic. Uh, we we have done we have studied less probably than others, and uh, you have to. It is give back to the society as well, so you have to articulate what you did during the pandemic, and uh, be truthful. And you know this is a great opportunity to learn something. You could learn, for example, karate as well at this point in time. But how gainfully you have helped yourself and the society around you might add to your uh, candidature for the company. So I think these are some things which I think which might be relevant for the, for this group. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shodhira. That's I, I think that's really quite insightful. And I, even I have learned a few things. So I'm sure, sure our students have also picked up a few points. From here. So the next topic that we want to discuss after the impact on the job and the changes in hiring process is the skills to be honed. Because we have quite a number of questions regarding that. So maybe Arno, quickly, because we are running a little bit of time. So in, in five to seven minutes, if you can help summarize based on some of the questions that I have shared. Hello? Sorry, forgot to so forgot to unmute myself. Yeah. Am I audible now? Shumash? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, OK. So I think. Uh, you're very correctly pointing out that I think in the post-COVID world, though I know that we are not yet seen the post-COVID world, where we are very much inside the COVID world. But in the post-COVID world, there are definitely some skills which would probably be slightly more different than what was there in the pre-COVID era. And as we look at, you know, taking in campus joiners, as we take in people and groom them, you know, uh, groom them for middle management roles skills which are becoming very very critical and i'll probably try and you know just touch upon them in the interest of time i'll not go into a lot of details but if you really think of when we come out of an engineering college a lot of the focus is purely on the technical skills in some cases you know some amount of functional skills or domain skills right uh, i think Probably what we miss out is that if we look at the overall skill horizon, you know, this is probably just about 15% of 
20% of the overall skills. And let me explain to you why. Uh, I think the first big, you know, uh, trait that we look for in people is around leadership, okay? Uh, in terms of how they are being able to take on leadership roles, you know, in any kind of situation, how they are thinking. And in the current scenario, I think one of the things we are seeing is how are they looking at disruption? You know, how are they, what are their thoughts around strategy, around resilience? Uh, can they look at a particular problem, as, you know, Shoti was saying, and look at the multi-dimensions of that, okay? Uh, so, in some way, it's sort of a multi-dimensional sense-making uh, skill set. The other thing, how does one fit into the culture? You know, because finally, it is all institutions, right? And, you know, we are essentially all working towards building stronger institutions. So the culture and the mindset shift uh, is very, very important. Uh, not only in terms of identifying the culture, associating with it, but also in terms of are you able to reframe the problem? Are you open to change? Uh, how do you look at uncertainty? How do you, you know, how do you handle anxiety? You know, these are all very critical skills coming out. And, you know, most of the, you know, not only the interviews, but even the trainings afterwards are very much, you know, uh, tuned towards these things. The other one is, of course, again, we are today in a very virtual world. And how do you look at network and relationships in this virtual world, right? How do you build networks? How do you nurture relationships? Uh, how do you nurture networks, both physically as well as virtually? Uh, in some way, I would say, you know, how do you display empathy? You know, how do you collaborate uh, in terms of what is your sensitivity towards, you know, diversity? Uh, one of the key thoughts which uh, I would probably say that you should have at this stage is being a personal credibility. Uh, you know, it is very important in everything that you do, uh, and especially when you're starting off your career that you need to build personal credibility, uh, whichever way you want to do that. And then, of course, in terms of delivering a superior experience uh, to all stakeholders, because you would go into different kinds of jobs. Every job would have multiple stakeholders, right? The stakeholders might be different for different jobs, but how do you give a superior experience to each of your stakeholders? I think that's something which is very core to you know working on your network and relationships. And then, of course, I think as you would be coming out of engineering, you've obviously done or gone deep into one particular technology. But I think it is now important for you to also think of digital and technology at a very broad level in terms of how do you look at data? How do you look at some of the emerging technologies like AI, uh, analytics? How do you look at cyber, you know, cybersecurity? Uh, how do you look at automation? All of these are very critical, you know, technologies which are coming in emerging, uh, you know, and I think it would make a lot of sense to have a bit of idea about many of the emerging technologies. And I talked of only probably four, there might be another 14, which you would probably just, you know, knowledge of different technologies is something which would really take you up. And then, of course, then comes, you know, the core piece, which you have already, you know, studied for the last four years. So I think that's how I would look at, you know, the skills of the future, just to summarize, you know, there would be skills around leadership, uh, there would be skills around culture and institution building, uh, skills around network and relationships, skills around digital and technology. And then, of course, you know, your function, your domain, uh, your specific field of engineering, you know, that's, of, of course, a given. So those would be my five skills in a box. Uh, coming to the, Thanks. you know, question which... Yeah, maybe, said, or not, yeah, maybe we'll come back to the question with uh, on that because I have a, um, one question that is uh, that has been coming up quite a lot, which I'll come back to you regarding the core um, and also regarding whether people for go, should go for higher uh, education right now or to tide over the time. I'll come back to you over that. Um, I want to just to quickly ask uh, Shwebal on the personal branding, like how he would advise um, the students on how they can, uh, you know, how they look for jobs now that the campus recruitments are, are drying up. So how do they place themselves in the job market? So a little bit on that. And then I'll come back with the key questions that we have identified from the questions that are coming in to each of you. Thank you so much, Arnold. Thanks. Yeah. Just a second. I'm just trying to share uh, a PPT uh, at my end. Uh, 
looks like i don't have okay the present now button do you see the present now option yes i do see if you click on that uh, a window or chrome tab or your enter screen yeah so maybe you can just pick up a window and uh, switch to the ppt can you see my screen now it's loading yes, yes, yes. we can see thank you yeah okay i have just put my thoughts in three simple slides it's not a boring long presentation but i thought let me at least crystallize uh, my thoughts so that i can be uh, more to the point and and uh, you know shomisha di please keep me honest in terms of the time i have for this yeah, yeah i will <laughs> this is just whatever uh, you know i have been thinking about and in fact most of it is also drawn from uh, just last to last week right now uh, the business school uh, summer placements are uh, ongoing uh, across the indian business schools and we just completed the hiring for our internship uh, from fms uh, last to last week so i'm fresh off an a remote interview process where back to back we interviewed uh, eight uh, aspiring mba graduates and we selected one of them so i'm going to come from that perspective also in terms of what we looked at uh, from an interviewer uh, perspective okay in terms of personal branding so what uh, this these are all my thoughts based on uh, you know research and and whatever we have experienced uh, almost all employers do background research and this has been going on even before uh, will continue to happen uh, even uh, you know going forward this is nothing new uh, but because of all the uh, digital advancements in terms of information being available and also this covid restricting you to step out and do any kind of physical you know background research most of the research has obviously moved online which means having and shotida mentioned it also having a tailored professional online presence is important in today's day and age it 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 is almost an extension of who you are in the digital world uh, and we also have uh, this is all data based on the manifest 2020 recruitment survey which we as an organization learned from uh, almost all employers consider an elevator pitch because every interaction is now let's say a 30 40 minute or maybe 45 minute one hour video interview and just to have a, a pitch ready in terms of okay these are my areas of strength and these are uh, proven skills or proven abilities or traits or characteristic traits that i have displayed over the past uh, you know putting a story around that it could be from non uh, educational uh, aspects also if you have strength in let's say uh, uh, you know a creative area like music or arts or dance could be something related to sports could be something as shotida and the others were, or, or they were mentioning could be related to something that you have done on the social side uh whatever it is uh, to bring that into a pitch is obviously very important because you will be asked that question uh, why should we hire you uh, compared to others uh another important fact is uh, you know the social media accounts uh, and and this is obviously become more important uh, as social media has penetrated our uh, lives uh you know a, a lot of candidates they, they use social media almost as an elimination mechanism so if i find something objectionable about a candidate on social media it becomes a red mark against that candidate or a negative point not so much a positive point on the other hand but a negative point uh so personal branding can include and i think shotida also mentioned this creating a personal portfolio website which could also include a video resume uh promoting your personal projects that you have done could be internships could be uh, unofficial internships could be a program that you have written uh, while you were uh, you know adjusting to the covid uh, shutdown uh, of the university or a certification that you have done on coursera uh, you know anything that you you can uh, include or project to showcase uh, your skill sets your capabilities uh, is is going to be a positive influence on the personal brand that you have and then uh, you know even if you are writing short stories even if you are uh, you know singing and you are sharing that content out there uh, it doesn't need to be uh, you know a technical article it doesn't need to be a thought leadership white paper it whatever it is the form in which you are creating content 
publishing it out there and letting it being uh, amenable to finding uh, is is a good idea in today's day and age because that's how you are letting everybody else know uh, what you have been doing in in this time uh five Sorry, simple a quick question shubal are you by social media are you referring to any particular social media or, or like linkedin no, or i i am talking about uh, everything i am talking about facebook twitter uh, linkedin instagram okay. even youtube uh, even youtube and we, um, you know anything that 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 where content can be shared amongst peers or networks i consider that uh, you know social sure, media sure, sure. Yeah. okay five simple trip uh, tips uh, for for people who are preparing for job interviews uh, again not none of this is uh, uh, anything that's uh, completely out of the blue uh, make your resume stand out uh, create a one pager resume clearly focus on your strengths don't don't create a two three five page resume try and create a one page resume it also uh, helps not only does it save time for the uh, evaluator or the interviewer to to understand what all you have done it also forces you as a candidate to think what are the most important uh, elements or aspects about my background my career my capabilities that i want to project out there so that that thinking exercise is also important and that could feed into your elevator pitch Uh, which is that question that you will be asked okay tell me something about yourself now that's a, a half volley in cricket language that we say half volley outs out leg stump that you will have to you know capitalize on there is no way you can let that go because that's the only time when the the person on the other side uh, is not looking for a particular answer it's your free swing how in which direction you want to take that conversation uh polish your social media profiles and uh, you know just just uh, uh, an extension to that is what i have called out at the bottom because it is important like i said social media is now used as an elimination screening mechanism so if if with a, with, with so much uh, polarization going on in the world uh, if, do you subscribe to some hate speeches do you like some of those uh, conspiracy theories uh you know those things have become important in terms of screening your profile uh, images of heavy partying uh, you know any any content that is illicit poor grammar when you are writing content you are again uh, you know you are using your personal brand uh, to impose an opinion or show appreciation or just share start a conversation so how you articulate how you come across in terms of conveying your thoughts those can also be your strengths and help you stand out or can pull you down if if it if it you know is seen in negative light uh seo your name is probably going to be a fallout of how much you do anyway on social media. sorry sorry no, that's okay yeah. but uh, it's a good time for me also to remind that probably i will need to uh, remind you that we are running out of time a little bit but yeah. it's a very interesting so i don't want to stop you maybe lovely, just quickly help topic, you sorry, yes i don't want to yeah. toss stop you so just quickly help me to cover the the yeah. issues yes so the last point because this this and i'll share this with everybody and i can take yeah. follow questions uh, you know offline after this session but just yeah. uh, to leave you with a few thoughts because these are challenges that you will face uh, you know in in any virtual interview or interaction uh, uh, going forward uh, test the technology whether the interviewer is going to be doing the interview on blue jeans or on google duo or, or you know google meet or uh, using adobe connect uh, or zoom whatever is the technology platform get familiar with it beforehand if you can that's important so that you are not stumped by okay what where do i go to mute unmute myself and things like that hello uh, ma'am target for example with my scenario today there is a power cut right now i am still able to do everything because i have my internet plugged on to a backup uh, so i have internet connection and the laptop is running dress for success you know treat it as a in person interview from your head to toe dress the way you would for an in person interview because when we are at home we often uh, get into our comfort zone and it's easy to let your guard fall and Uh, that's not good uh, you should be on your toes uh, in every interview 
set the stage for distraction few you, you know make sure if you can get into a room let everybody know you are getting into an interview switch off your phone tell your roommates parents whoever it is that uh, i'm i'll i'm not going to be disturbed for the next one hour uh, be well prepared come in a little early join 5 minutes early it's it's better to be there when the other person comes in rather than you coming in later uh, maintain eye contact body language uh, take a, a, a minute to pause after you hear the question and then start talking because often there are latencies due to internet bandwidths and things so if you start talking and and the person on or the other end is still talking uh, it it can you know create a, a, a cognitive dissonance and then at the end close the interview by sharing your appreciation that that's very important uh, because everybody is now on the verge of uh, screen fatigue so much screen time family work everything is being done through screen so uh, you know share your appreciation that you enjoyed and what your input you know takeaways were uh, and then there are some just do's and don'ts which are basic hygiene factors at the bottom i don't need to explain them but uh, you know hopefully this this uh, helps with some perspective excellent thank you so much shri but i think that's uh, that was i have taken a few pointers for myself i'm sure it's a, it has been a very good uh, learning experience for the for the students as well so i think in the interest of time what i'll do now is like as a, i'll just go around and pick up one of the pertinent questions from all the sections that we i believe we have not covered and would also take that as uh, you know the maybe a final word from our from our uh, eminent panelists before we close for today and whatever we cannot dis, uh, uh, cover today then definitely as as i said we will try to come back with clarifications from our panelists and share over email so um, starting i'll just go on and follow any order maybe with with ornob there was one of the things that uh, i wanted to have and we need to really be uh, mindful of the time so probably just 5 uh, minutes for from each of you one of the key questions that we had received was like the uh, the uh, students are wondering like at this time because the the um, the campus uh, jo job recruitment recruitments are drying up is it a good idea for them to pursue higher studies like like we masters or or their mba to tide over this time and then um probably so that because we know it's that that is just a transient phase so what's your uh, thought on that so my thought on that would be that higher education is a good idea at any point of time you know for pandemic or no pandemic i think i would probably say that higher education if you have the chance or the inclination to pursue that uh, please go ahead and do it uh, because uh, you know it it will only help you in life uh, in terms of uh, pandemic i think with the kind of uh, uh, i would say uh, perspective on technology that is coming out and who are technocrats in some way or the other you would find that digital transformation is probably the biggest thing which clients uh, and organizations across the world are investing on so probably as an engineer you don't really have much to worry in terms of you know the job market and all that it's a you know people are recruiting large it organizations are recruiting most of the core industries are recruiting uh they might be a bit slow to come to your campus but they will come for sure uh so don't worry about the job but if you are really inclined for higher education please go for it uh i i did the same myself uh i didn't take the job which i got from campus uh i went for higher education and i think it was a, a good decision when i look at myself and you know again it's an individualistic thing that whether you want to work for a few years and then go for higher education uh depending on what kind of higher education you are thinking of uh but if you have the inclination please go for it sure thank you so much thank you so much so much onno maybe um for the next question i'll ask uh, arupta because um, there has been a lot of questions like for for the core especially the those who are uh, looking for core jobs so what would be your advice for them how to prepare like whether they should actually that like like uh, what uh, on have mentioned like for the education perspective also should they invest in uh, higher education related to it or, or digital transformation or they should still look for job, job prepare for jobs in their own 
industry w would look for some advice there from you i think i would i would go with arno that uh, you know higher education is always a good thing uh, but uh, don't go for higher education because you are not getting a job i mean that's not should not be the motivation for going for higher education if you really want to pursue higher studies either mba or you know mtech or you know some of the specialization on on the digital side uh, decide your goal and plan backwards from there okay many a times you know because you already graduated invested four precious years of your life in the engineering education the next two years or three years uh, has to be really thought through well that what is it that this particular educational stint is going to get me to okay so think about that goal and then take the decision number one number two is that uh, as as again arnab said the core industry is not stopped hiring completely they are hiring okay it's just that the quantum of hiring has shrunk and is going to come back to normal so you need to prepare yourself i would completely go by the recommendations tabled by shoibal excellent recommendation in terms of how do you you know present yourself in the digital world because in the near seeable future you know, interviews are going to be in the virtual world in the virtual mode not in a physical presence mode and uh, the other thing is that network network as much as you can in the core industry circle okay uh, leverage your alumni association uh, i i i i i'll be very enthused to see that you know like shogunshriti if other university can bring up a technology fest where you can you know bring in lot of industry academia collaborative exercise and create a branding for yourself the third year students especially okay uh, the third year students should also go for a you know uh, or the final year students and third year students in collaboration should go for a uh, recruitment outreach as much as possible so so i i my my take is that higher education always good but think through before you take that leap of faith otherwise if you are going for a job you know going for a job then go by all the good recommendations which have come in in today's discussion and make sure in a core job you know like leadership skills cultural skills alongside that your core technology strength is going to be tested so um, um, because you are passing out from jadhopur i tend to believe that you will score at least 8 out of 10 or 7 out of 10 which will be a qualifier for the hr round but you know don't neglect like that please make sure that you are coming well prepared on the technology side as well because soft skill alone uh, will not be able to take you uh, you know uh, or land you the job all right sure thank you so much um so uh for shodita one of the questions that i think would be uh, the the listeners would like to know more about is like uh, so how, there was one question like how can we bring financial consultancy ib firms to come to ju for placements i think they're also looking for some advice here if there could be something that they they could do uh, to get more of these firms to come because i think that right now the campus is is not is drying up it's not enough for for everyone so we can hear you yeah yeah, yeah. so i think it uh, you know companies will need will come when they find the talent in ju to be aligned with the needs so you know you just can't have a uh, you know nbfc come just directly for financial skill sets but maybe on the it it side you can definitely expect them to come and i think as uh, all of us said uh, arno also said that we need to work closer with the network which we have and enhance it further and uh, you know it has to be consciously done i don't know if it is being consciously done but uh, i can name a large company it company when i spoke to them about uh, jadhavpur university they said we, we jadhavpur university does not keep us on the top of the list and it's a well known company you know so we go to techno india that was the comment that uh, my colleague said so i think uh, th there has to be a conscious attempt by jadhavpur university and uh, i am happy to help as an alumni uh, to attract more companies to come to jadhavpur university so the, i and i think rest of the panelists and also you who have uh, organized the event uh, would chip in so i think it has to be worked out it will not happen just like that Sure. Yeah. Um, I think with that we will have to decide to 
close this discussion for today, though I, I have a lot of other questions, which also we would ideally want to go over individually. But I think overall, we have been able to cover the broad spectrum into which we had uh, uh, we had divided this uh, discussion into, that is the changes, the impact on the job market, the changes in the hiring process, the skills to be honed and the personal branding, how uh, we can prepare ourselves for the changes that are emerging in this new normal situation. Um, it has been a, a very, very insightful uh, evening for me. I hopefully for the students as well. And thank you once again to all the panelists for taking out time for this and all the organizers. But um, uh, Konob, uh, I think I would like you to uh, sure. say a few words. Yes. Yeah. So thanks, uh, Mr. Ji, for the excellent coordination. And thanks to all the panelists. Uh, kind of, I'll hand over to our Vice President, uh, uh, Saurabh, uh, to kind of conclude. But before that, I just found an interesting question to maybe to end in a lighter note in the uh, posted in the chat. And the question is to Anubha. All of the question is like, how do you refresh yourselves? To do at any point of time, do you feel burnout? And uh, what do you actually do to have a sustained excellence in the industry being uh, such a leadership position for such a long time? So maybe just a, a lighter question to end with. No, I think uh, <laughs> let me keep it as a light question. I, I <laughs> do read a lot. I do read a lot, but mostly I read fiction. Uh, but I can also tell you that every one of them have their users. So uh, when I look at my... Uh, it was probably a 45-minute interview, but 30 minutes of it was only on PG Woodhouse. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you land up with an interviewer who is also a voracious reader and, you know, who just wants to discuss with you on your interest area, right? So, you know, I was not asked uh, about finance or technology. I was asked about how many aunts, uh, you know, Bertie Wooster had uh, and to name them, right? So uh, that was the start of the interview. So <laughs> on a lighter note, you know, just keep reading whatever you want to, and it, you would probably find that that refreshes you. Thank you. And uh, with that, probably come to the close of the question and session, and we will definitely draft the answers uh, with the input of all the panelists and said to use ESL, and they can circulate. So much can circulate to all the joinees over here. So over to Sharada for the concluding remarks. Thanks. Thanks, Kono. Thank, thank you, everybody. everybody. Thank you, especially the students who have joined in such big numbers. I mean, the success of the event is based on your participation. Thanks for the questions. It does show your excitement, interest, and and the variety of questions really enriched the, the discussion, I, I would think. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Shayan Chatterjee, Professor Chiranjim Bhattacharya from, from Jadavpur. A few people who worked behind the scenes, uh, Dr. Shugotam Ghosh, Production 2000, Mr. Kishala Rai Choudhury, MCA 1993, all part of uh, the Juas uh, community in Singapore. Thank you, the panelists, uh, Arubda, Shotida, Onno, Shoibal, and Shurmishta for moderating this. It's pretty well done. Konob Shublo, of course, from the committee, we all thank you again. and. Uh, and all of the management committee members uh, led by Yamita. So this uh, give back to JU uh, initiative, well, it was, it was conceived to help uh, students bridge the gap between the academia in the industry, uh, and the industry and, and kind of bring more of readiness. These kind of initiatives never existed when we were graduating. So I would think this is, this is something that the students should uh, fully utilize and maximize. We have a few other initiatives that's, uh, that we are working on, and, uh, and hopefully it should be a reality in the, in the next few months to come. This particular initiative, Excel at the rate uh, AUR, uh, which is the alumni university relationship, uh, we did an uh, uh, event uh, August 1st, a quick peek into the world of AI. Again, it was received well, and it was a very, very well received uh, 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 discussion. We have a few other uh, initiatives as well. A couple of weeks down the line, on on November 21st, uh, we are looking at a fireside chat. So uh, the details will be out soon, and, and, and we would uh, hope to see good participation from there. It's a slightly different topic, and it's it's very interesting, and it it, it kind of hinges around a very interesting continent called Africa. So. 
and it, it it focuses on development economics so that's that's that could be interesting any of the alumni want to join please feel free it it it, it could be good insight in terms of the unknown world for a lot of us again uh, we are also working on a other couple of initiatives like a mentorship program to structure it and uh, and also finishing school so all these to kind of help students maximize their readiness uh, from from an industry perspective uh, so stay tuned on and uh, and once again i would like to just uh, 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 end the discussion with with a huge thanks to the panelists and and the moderator and the students and and everybody involved thank you very much uh, we look forward to interact more though it's being spearheaded by singapore but it's 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 something for the students by the alumni and uh, doesn't really matter where you are it's 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 just somebody who raises the hand and comes forward in in taking the initiative to bring this alive so we look forward to interact more with you thank you thank you very much thank you everybody Thank you, and do reach out to us with the email ID shared with Isel. So do reach out to us if you have any questions through the email. Thanks all for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do. Pondo, por favor, no